the minority versus the majority, you know, that's it, it's the it's the only thing to me is fear that would hold you back. So speaking up. So their fear supersedes their their will to do right by this child that they see getting molested. Like they see a big man with a little girl and them say, Yo, them little girl let us love big man like what? What? That narrative is so disgusting to me. Jesus Christ. Instead of teaching your sons not to be rapists and, and predators, you're going to tell your, your daughters not, oh, you dressing like this, don't dress like this, don't act too grown or what? Oh. First of all, the first time I got raped, oh God, I look like I'm coming from church. Yeah, I can talk about it now. I, honestly, it took a while to be able to say that without flinching. Oh. And this was somebody I trusted. It's not stra it wasn't strangers who hurt me. This is somebody I trusted. So I was just coming in the music business. And I was coming from the country, moved to Kingston. I was, I was brought to my sister's house first as a babysitter um, for her daughter, my niece. And in, in the process of babysitting, um, she ended up sending me to a fashion design school in Halfway Tree in Kingston. And I would go to school in the morning. I dropped my niece at her school. And, and then I go to my school three days a week. And then I go back to my niece's school and wait until her school is over. And then I bring her home. And I started on the mornings that I didn't have school because it was only three, three days per, per week school. Um, I started searching around for a student to go to. This is when I, I was just trying to break into the industry. And I found one at the top of Maxfield Avenue in Kingston near Halfway Tree. New name music, Kestra Brown Studio. Miss Don Henry was there at the time. And I started going there. Now, there was one artist there. Now, at the time, there were three big artists, and really huge artists in Jamaica. Shabaranks was the king. Pacha was the queen. She was next to Shaba. And then there was another guy in, next in line. Um, and he became my mentor. Uh -huh. He became my mentor, and he... He used to call me his little sister, and I believed it. I really believed it. So at one point, when I turned 17, um, my big sister, who I was living with, um, said she didn't realize I was that young. She thought I was, like, turning 20 or something. So turning 17 mean, meant um, I couldn't go to the studio anymore. I was devastated because that was the only thing that, in my life that was actually good. Right. And I went to the studio one last time and I told them, like, listen, I can't come anymore. My sister has forbidden me. Um, this is it for me, guys. It was a nice, it was really nice. Um, and he, my mentor, said, no, man, you want me to come talk to her? And I'm like, you would? No, my sister, my auntie, every woman in my family loved him. So I was like, yo, surely if him come and talk for me, my good. Yeah. My mouth would. So he said, Yeah, man, of course, we'll come and talk to your sister. I'm like, oh, cool. So that evening he brought me home and he sat and he talked to my sister. And he took responsibility for me. As she said, she didn't think it was safe for a young girl my age to be out, which is a good uh, it is a good concern and I appreciate it. Mm. And he took responsibility and she trusted him. And she gave me gave me permission based on his taking responsibility. Shannon, her ass. When that man, find, he, first of all, he never made an advance. He only spoke of me as his little sister. He never made an advance, never not once. And I say that many times to reinforce the fact that there's no indication that there was any thought of that in his mind. Yeah. So he was moving house. At the time, I was fresh from the country. I don't know Kingston. I didn't know the geography of Kingston, right? Mm -hmm. And this is me just talking about how easily we accommodate rape culture in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So he was moving house. And I'm fresh from the country. I'm, I've never been a dunce. I wouldn't say I'm exactly naive, but I was ignorant of the, some ways of people. And... Like he'd done many times before, he offered me a ride home. So on the ride home, then he said he had to drop by his new place. Everybody knew he was moving. And he said he wanted to stop by his new place real quick and drop off something. Huh. Now, if I had known the geography of Kingston, I would have known something was wrong. Because my home was on the way to his new place. 
this is what I realized afterwards when I got to know Kingston well. So he said he wanted to drop it. And I was like, sure, why not? Why, w- why would I say no to you stopping along the way to drop off something at your place when this is your car and your ride? What is this? Shandy. Oh, cool. Cheers. I have Shandy. I love Shandy. I just <laughs> all of my Shandy off last week. <laughs> I had to come get my phone mm. because my phone was this is nice. Go ahead. This is nice. So he, he was going to stop by his place, right? Uh-huh. To drop off something at his new place that he's setting up. And he drives to the place and he stopped outside of it. The, it I don't, it's kind of like I've not been able to go back there to look. <laughs> Because psychologically, I just couldn't oh, handle God. it. But it's, it's kind of like a... T- it looked like a cross between a townhouse and an apartment building. Um, And he stopped outside of it on the curb. And I was sitting in the car and he jumped out and he started to run toward the building. And then he stopped and he looked like he was thinking and then he came back and he said, so you don't want to check out the place? And I was like, okay. And he was like, yeah, man, come check out the place and you can give me some pointers one tell me what you think and what we can do with the place and stuff like come in man i was like oh cool this made me feel valid because i really was his little sister i was a part of his process and he wanted my opinion on his place and i was like cool i can't i can't lie i was impressed i was affected because it felt like yeah um this person actually saw me as as an equal as a part of his circle yeah and i went on the outside, at the landing in front of his door, there were some people see there's a balcony, a, a little railing. So some steps going all the way up the building and we, on the landing in front of his door, there were some people. I can't tell how many people, maybe about four, four people. There was a woman there too. Um, and I said, good afternoon, and we went in the door. When we went inside of the door, he locked the door. And that made me kind of pause a little bit. I was like, well, but then I thought to myself, oh, Kingston, you know them still pure, pure criminal, <laughs> right? Pure criminal. So he locked the door, and then he started to show me around. Girl, when we reach the bedroom, is a full on assault, full assault. When I see this man speaking, you know, and when I see Jamaica big him up sometimes, and they act like he's such an upstanding citizen, always a Christian man, he's a nice guy. I go bonkers because you see, no matter what nobody tells me, I know my experience. I was there. He was there. He knows my experience. We know what happened. Child, me defend myself. I was I was about ninety five pounds. It's a big diesel man. Thick, so it's a muscle. Nobody fat. And when he start beat me, me, me decide. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You not have to beat me. Me give up. Me a ball for help, you know. I scream for help. Me, me ball for rape. People there outside the door. You send me scream and ball for rape and I know you're nobody answer. You just stop. Because what may I do? Wait until he, he, he kill me? May I get real licks? So I stop fight. I stop fight. And that continued for hours. For hours. I was locked inside of his new place that he was moving into. And just violated for hours. And when me done, when him done, him hold me and lead me to the bathroom. Put me in a shower himself and bathe me. No evidence, no left. Me get a proper scrub. Proper, proper scrub. Who me did I go report him to? I, I... Remember me come there voluntarily, you know? Remember me ball for help and me ball for rape and nobody not answer, you know? So who me did I report him to and who was going to be my witness? Remember, this is, this is a man who is adored by the 14 parishes and the diaspora. Who may I report him to? May I want upcoming artists. You hear what I'm saying about the girl that I'm going to Big Bill Cosby? So who may I report him to? May I'm an idiot. Now let me tell you the dialogue I had going into that experience. My big sister was a senior teacher at Ocheres High School and I used to live with her. And I used to sit around, hang around her and the other teachers. And one of the, her co-workers was the daughter of a judge, a magistrate. And I heard her say to the other woman, her daddy told her and her sister, if they got raped, do not go to the police, come to him. Because if they go through the system, they're going to be raped repeatedly by the system. That was the one dialogue I had in my head of reporting rape. 
I would never go to the police. Not with that in my head. And that was a judge. So I went home. I went home with the conversation. Now listen, when when he finished and he made me be it, you know, and put me in one, one big t-shirt, his t-shirt, I had on a big old t-shirt. And I was just sitting in a corner, hug my knee and just a ball. My ball until no tears now come like me dry. And he asked if I wanted to go home. And I said, no, because me, me never want to leave out until night. Me never want nobody to see my face. Like I felt so, I felt dirty. I felt ashamed. I felt guilty. I felt like shit. And I knew that people were there when I went in. And I was hoping that they couldn't remember my face. And if I came out in the darkness, they wouldn't be there. And nobody would see me and I could just go home in anonymity. When I went home, I went to the shower again. And I showered. And I showered. Men have no evidence. Men have nothing. Who may I go to? My poor. And I went voluntarily. This is why you sometimes you see me fight, me argue with people. I'm going to fight violent with, with people where we speak out of their ass, you know, because they don't know. They sit over there in judgment and they speak on these girls and they don't know. You don't know what I feel like. You know what I feel like when I go home? Remember now, me live with a judgmental sister. I come from a judgmental family. I come from a family where I say I should have got college. Although they have no money for pay for college. My family would have preferred that I went to college and indebted myself with a student loan than pursue my passion. And they made it very clear. They tell me I'm a ton of i a worthless now. And some said iron balloon. I would never bust, so go get a real job. I couldn't go to them and tell them that I went to the studio and got ripped. Could I? How, could I, how, how would I broach that conversation with some people who already said that was what was waiting for me at the studio? So now may I come back and say, you did right. Which meant I couldn't go to the studio anymore. And the studio didn't do anything to me. One man did. Studio never do nothing to me at all. One monster did. And him do it repeatedly and people protect him. I, well, first, wait. Oh my God, I'm at a loss for words right now. First of all, I didn't even know that you went through something like this. Second of all, I know it was a long time ago and I know you're okay now, but I'm so sorry that happened to you. I am so sorry that happened to you. And third, how the hell did you get through that? I didn't. Did you ever tell anybody? I, I tried. But every time I brought it up, it just was never convenient to the people around me. People around me had much more important problems to deal with. Important problem like a coworker who keeps talking shit about me and I'm not looking. <laughs> Stuff like that. I had to sit and listen to complaints about petty, stupid shit all day, every day from other people. I wanted to talk about it. I could not. I simply could not. So let me tell you, further than that, I ended up back in the country um, at my mother's house. And I was trying to break into music just the same because I felt like, you know what, I'm not going to allow this to deter me. No more than ever, I have a reason to do this. And so I was back in the country, and in the country there are less opportunities to sing. Um, in, the, in the city, I could go to the studios and record. In the country, we never had no studio. So I was singing on sound systems. I went to dances, and I, I hoped to get in via that route. And I was, I, I was kind of like a local celebrity in St. Mary, the parish I'm from. Um, when I started getting put on posters, I was like, yeah, all right, girl, come. Now, you know music is a male-dominated field. So the majority of the people I was hanging out around was male. Um, I started to date a guy I knew since I was a kid. I know him from as far back as I can remember. And I confided in him. He used to come to dances with me too, with a bunch of us. And I confided in him and I told him what happened. What had happened to me in Kingston. And he seemed to empathize. Apparently, not really. Because he set up a train. 
he set up a train. So the second time I experienced that was actually a train. Oh my God. <laughs> Good people pick me do it, you know. Upstanding. So let me tell you the irony of this train. It, it happened in a policeman's house. Son of a policeman. Yeah. You have no idea. This and this is this is nothing. This is Jamaica. Everybody knows this story. Not mine. They know theirs. You'd be surprised how many girls experience this. I know. How many boys did this? I know. How many parents allow this? When this happened, I was actually hanging out with this guy I was dating, who I confided in, who I felt comfortable with because I had known him all my life. This wasn't a stranger. I'd known him. I don't remember not knowing him. And and the, the other guys, uh, two of the other guys, I knew them from school. They went to other different schools. They, they went to a different school than mine. But we, we met up at like sport day events and stuff like that. I knew them. And I felt comfortable with them too. And they were my age. So I felt like, surely I'm safe. Mm -mm, I wasn't. Not safe at all. Um, and this happened mm -hmm. hanging out with friends just you know, doing what normal teenagers do. First time was 17, second time 19. Oh my God. So the second time when this happened, and <laughs> people say, so why you never scream? Remember the first time I fought and I was beat up. Second time it was a few of them. One man beat me up. You think me I go fight a few men? I'm not fight a few men. All me I do, I just look for the one person who I trust the most and I say, why you do this to me? And I kept repeating that me can't believe and he wouldn't look in my face. He just wouldn't look at me. And they had, they did whatever they came to do. Mm -hmm. and that was it. Again, I couldn't leave until the night because this comes with an extremely large amount of just disgust. Like, it's not self-hatred, but it's like dirt. Just dirt. Like, I don't want nobody to see me like this, because right now, I'm dirty. And again, I shower, shower, shower. And I left. When I left, it was night, because I didn't want anybody to see me by day. So I left again in the night. And when I walked away from there, on my way to grab a, a bus to go home, um, I saw somebody I recognized. I have a sound system, so I know him because I remember my sing fan sound system. And he asked me where I was coming from. And I guess because it was just so new and I hadn't, I really didn't think of any kind of insulation for myself yet. I just opened my mouth and it just let out. And I told him everything. And he said, Come, me bring you to the station. And I said, No. And he said, What do you mean you know I'm going to the station? And I said, No, because. The house I was in belonged to a policeman. He was on duty. I was going to walk into the station and tell him, maybe he locked me up for, 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 for breaking and entering any house. He never, he never invited me there. Would I go report his son to him? Do I trust reporting his son to him? St. Mary's a place where a young woman was stranded trying to get a drive and she went to the police station to seek refuge and, they, and the policeman raped her. You think me I go go to the police station and go tell one policeman saying son just uh, uh, assault me in a house, in a female house? What may I do there? So I went home. When I, the guy I was talking to gave me an advance notice because when I said I, I didn't want to go to the station, he said, oh, so you must have want it then. So I just shut up. After that, I shut up. I said nothing. I went home. I went home. And about two days after, I was at home. I was, first of all, I went home and I was just showering. Me just a beard, 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 beard. Me couldn't stop beard. Like, my beard, for days, me just a intermittent. Me just go, every time I think about it hard, me go back to beard again. And I was home. Everybody else was gone. And I was alone home. I'm here, a, a, a car horn, I'm a gate. I'm a go and look. And I the boy them in a them in a white car, I mean no kind of sedan. I'm a gate. 
I asked me if me all right. And I was so scared because I was home alone. Me run back inside and lock up. Because I thought I I thought there was gonna be a repeat. Me never have no escape route. Yeah. But luckily, they left. After that, I was home. Me stay home for months. Me just couldn't come out. Me never want to see nobody. Me never want nobody to see me. Yeah. I don't think people understand the, the psychology of this. That when they speak, this is why I keep saying, do not talk. If you don't know, don't speak. Just It's okay to be silent. Better to be silent than to cause more damage. Wait, I have so many questions. So, did you tell your mom? No. So your mom never knew? And your mom, didn't, Not me. your mom didn't, like, suspect any weird behavior in you, like, that you changed? I don't know. She didn't say. But you have to understand, too, you know. She came from a different time, and she was brought up on different rules. She would come from a society where, let, let me tell you, every time I had heard anything like that mentioned, the sweet stigma was always placed on the victim. I remember one girl that everybody used to point at and say, see the girl over them rape. Our family had to move her. I don't know if she migrated and never saw her again. Never saw her again. There was another girl who got raped and then she started acting different and everybody say she mad out. And it's like, yo, boy, she just turned one piece of skittle, bomb. Like, skittle wasn't a word then, but it's like she turned or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's supposed to rape behavior that the, the lack of self-worth that comes from that violation because what it does is not physical. The biggest damage is not physical. Because at one point, you know how I used to treat myself, how I used to counsel myself to, 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 to save me from the brink of madness. One of the boys, one of them Monday from the train had a micro penis. And that is what I used to cheer myself up. Like, well, technically, it's one less person because he technically wasn't a part of it because he really had no penis. Oh, my God. It's just the kind of madness that he used to bring me back from madness. And... Oh, God. Let me tell you something. Every single time I went on the road and somebody said something negative, that made me feel like I was falling into a hole because I felt like I had to go on the road. Yeah. It was always a woman. Women. I remember one time... I went back to Port Mary, which is where it happened. And I was walking on the street. And one girl was walking with another girl. I can't still remember her face. I can't even remember the second girl's face, but I remember the first one. She pointed at me across. She was at that, that, that for those who know Port Mary on the leg. She did over the little harbor that she the back of the clock. Side of Jane. Over the side of the walk. And me the, I come off of the bridge. Come into the clock. And when I passed the gas station, I could hear her and she pointed. I said, see the girl there? And that girl there, them are frontier. Loud. <sighs> I remember like it's yesterday, I tell you, I can hear her voice, I can hear her face. I point, and she laughed. Remember, I didn't do nothing. You know? All I did was hang out with my friends, with my trust. This is the kind of narrative we're out there right now in our society, and we accommodate it. You see, this is the reason why when they put all these, these they might put all of them measures in place and I pretend to care about people with, with COVID. Me no bite. Right, Because right. rape is a bigger pandemic than COVID in Jamaica. Yeah. We have more people get raped than we get COVID. Yeah. I mean, so them I do not know about it. Yeah. When me look and see rapists decide that they me can point and say, see my rapist. You know how much rapists you know? Rape victims trust me and then tell me. I mean, believe them. Me can tell you. This is my superpower. Me can tell you when I tell a lie. And very, very, very seldomly may ever get a feeling like a girl alive. The language you then use and the body language you then have. The behavior changes. Me can identify the behavioral changes. Right. Me identify it because me identify with it. Me can pick up on it. Certain things with them say. Me know that now I come from a girl whenever I get raped. Because when I say it resonates within me. Right. Me know when I true. I know. That's why I know so because they're ready. I'm not ask Christ. I'm not ask Christ. I tell you. Listen. I'm going to have to go and listen to the victim them and some of them are tell lies. Some of them are tell lies for real. But you see, one of them where I talk to you, girl, it resonates and it breaks it. 
it check my, my intestines and it twist them in a sun nuts and it put me in my bed and I hug up my knee and in a feet and I cry. Because I feel them pain, I know the pain there. I know the pain there. The only thing it brought me out is that pain. First of all, I've heard many people say, Oh, so if I'm really raper, why should you go back there? Girl, I beat one of my rapes. After rape. Shannon, I don't know how to explain it to you. Was that a way that you but just tried it? I, I did, the only thing I can explain it as the need for validation. Right. Because it broke me down so bad, I felt dirty. I just wanted to hear I was good. I wanted to hear that there was nothing wrong with me. The, the singer, what did, what did violate me? You know? me, me the, actually, they're on him for a while too. I went back near him. I wanted to hear him say it was a mistake. It was an accident. He was drunk. I wanted to hear something. Yeah. Me did just want to repair my belief in a people and my trust. Me want to repair my belief in myself. Me never trust my judgment and me want him to fix it. Because me did trust him. That never happened. When me realize it, now I come, me stop me around him. Second set, where I'm a friend, me start date one of them. When you, you know when me broke it off? When he, when he proposed. What? When me said, oh my God, this is crazy. This is a madness now. This is gone far enough. At that the time, at that the time, I broke it off. When he proposed. And this, when he, he, he proposed, this was when, let me tell you now. This is before me have my, my daughter. My daughter born at 21. My, get, my, my second time I get raped was 19 years old. A, it's a song that start playing on the radio. And I think, say, it's affected by the fact that now I start get noticed. So I have a song I play on the radio and people are start look for me like one artist and I push because the thing about me, you can't break me with one bad event. It's easy to break me with comfort. Comfort to make me stay in my house and lie down and watch Netflix. A bad event will make me get up and prove to you and I go find a way to cut your throat. That's it. You can't beat me like that. You can't beat me by beating me. So... You have to me. Wait, so, oh my God. So is this an entertainer that is still singing and entertaining and is still... He might amazing? try, but he flop, man. He might try, but he flop, flop, flop. And every time I talk about him, I say it, because I know him see it. And he need for no. Say me, I see him as a flop guy. He flop. <laughs> and, and people say... Call him name. What may I call him name for? Me don't be the only person I call him name. Me not revive him. You never, you never, you never told dead. one person. Hmm? Not one person knows who this man is. People know him. People close to me, but they not talk. Oh. Oh my God. I have to warn everybody to secrecy. We not about him back. Because me know people stay. People are morbid. And the moment I call his name, is the moment he will start being promoted right, you're right. by these morbid fucking people out here. You're right. So me not call him name. If me call him name, man, me tap out my tongue and that shit. Me not call him name. I... He not get no prop top for me. He must be as dead as he is. Oh, my God. Second set of boy, though, may I tell you this? When I hear people say, why did you go back? Why did they go back to Bill Cosby's house? I may understand. First of all, the, the disruption to you, to all your processes, we have to do with common sense and reason. Remember, you know, reason bring your comments, you know, and, it, and, and, and it mash up, you know. So you're not going to go back there. So you, first of all, you don't trust yourself. And no matter who tell you, say you're pretty, you're sexy, you're talented, you're, no matter what people tell you, you don't know, believe it. Because somebody out there so no, say you're dirty. And me, they just want to hear the person that tell me, say, no, man, you're wrong. You're not dirty. You're the desirable. Something, anything, any stupidness, I would have accepted anything. Yeah. Anything. In other state, eh? Shannon, me, they just want a word. Me, just want to hear him say, me make a mistake. If he may say, then he try to chat to me, he's you know. Me have to tell him, move from here, me, you know. Because me, I tell him something. At the grace of God, make that boy I still there, because he face it, feel it up. All that. <laughs> All that energy. Exactly. You know what you like. But guess what now? One, a man going to rape me and walk off knowing he's rape me. And then two, me going to hurt him and carry, carry that from my karma for the rest of my life. So twice he get to violate me. I'm not getting that. He not get that from me. He not get that from me. 
Okay, I'm going to sit down this time and I'm going to watch me drive and see if I'm going to go. 